day, everybody, and welcome once again to Kamustahan with Pedro. And thank you for all of you who have subscribed to my channel, watch, like, like the page, and follow us on our social media accounts, and also listening to our podcast. So if you are new to this uh, right now, feel free to connect with us. And this very day, it is already episode 31, and today we will be talking about the, the topic, Love What Is Good. And I'm so excited today because I have a very special guest here. He will introduce himself by and by and what he's doing. But if I were you, you have to tag your friends, share it with them, and also send the links to them. So I will give this time now to Deo. And Deo, could you like introduce yourself and what you're doing and uh, do it? Uh, hi, I'm Deo. And uh, I'm from Iloilo. And... Uh, I'm a pastor's kid, and I also help in the church. And uh, what I do is, for the meantime, I do freelance, freelancing, and uh, I'm I'm trying to make a basic support for myself uh, through through crafting and fixing stuff like guitars. Um, uh, doing stuff for music and uh, metal works like like motorcycle things, uh, and and still continue myself uh, helping in the church. Oh no, my my audio went off. I'm so Major, sorry. I'm so Major sorry. My audio, my audio went off. Um, again, I was just asking Dale. Oh, when did it start? Like the one that you're doing right now, and how did it start? Did it start with just a hobby, and then you said this is something that I want to do now, or stuff like that? Uh, uh, can do Tagalog or yeah, English you could do that. Or could do Tagalog, but English would be better though, because people from the uh, around the world are watching. Ah, uh, see, see, see. Uh, I started doing, I started doing stuff like uh, crafting since, since my father is a craftsman and, and he's a pastor at the same time. So, I grew up in a family doing hardware stuff and. I couldn't remember when I started doing woodworking and maybe when I was younger, I'm trying to help my, uh, I'm helping my father with when he does, when he do woodworking and, and when I turned high school, in high school, when I turned uh, around uh, 13 year old, I started uh getting into metal works and that's where when i learned how to craft metals and and, and it continued uh when i turned 15 and started learning about motorcycles uh and crafting some crazy ideas just for fun and it started like a lifestyle for my family and it continued like I like I have it uh, it's like your your family name like that that work is part of your family and still doing the the basic things like uh, simple crafting or home home remedies uh, uh, like fixing the lights and other stuff at home so it's not like a just like a hobby or something but it's also part of the culture wow that's really great so guys if you are near uh and if you need help you could also contact uh dale here and uh, if there's something that you want for him to do maybe that's related to what he's doing that will be great 
anyway, Dale, let's go to our topic. Um, uh, the topic that we have this very uh, night is love. Uh, what, what was the topic again that I was saying again? Sorry. Love what is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Love what is good. When you say about, yeah, when you say about uh, this uh, phrase here that says love what is good or this uh, uh, statement here, love what is good, what comes to your mind, Dale? And maybe if you could share experiences or things that could relate to your personal life with this uh, statement here, love what is good. Uh, for me, love means something that you really cherish or, or something that you treasure. And but uh, it says love what is good. So it means you're th we're thinking about what is goodness and what is best for for it's either for ourselves or for for other people and what is best for everyone. Uh, socially speaking, like uh, you should love what is good for somebody or for the person next to you. You should love doing what is best for everyone and for, for yourself, uh, for other things like you love what is, what is, uh, what is making you feel better uh, what is fulfilling you? Something like that. Wow, that's really great, there. And um, this very evening, I'm so sorry, uh, Dale, if we have to speak in English. But pero kung di mo na talaga kaya, pwede pwede ka rin magtagalog if you want or ilong. Yeah. All right, don't worry, don't worry. You could just speak it out. All right. So anyway, we will be reading this very evening about uh, a verse in the Bible. I will be sharing my screen for everybody to see. This is Titus chapter um, one. We'll be reading from uh, verses 5 to 9. So I will read it. It says here, Appointing elders who love what is good. It says here, Paul is saying this to, to Titus. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. An elder must be blameless Faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, and not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he could encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's go first here to the topic that says here, The, re the reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished. We will first discuss this. Put, putting in order what was left unfinished. So with this um, statement here, um, Deo, um, is there anything that you could relate to it? Like putting in order what was left unfinished. Maybe it's personal related, ministry related, or work related. Anything, any any thoughts on that? Like putting what is left uh the, the right words there is putting in order what was left unfinished. Yeah, uh, about the thing uh, unfinished, there are so many uh, situations in our lives, in our family, that we have things to do after, after our parents have, have uh, after our parents uh, parents time of uh, like their prime days and we need to take over the thing the things that they've done but there are still a few uh, things to polish or uh, to finish like the the plans for the whole family or uh, there are things like uh, for example uh, 
in a, for a Filipino, every family dream, every family uh, dream to have a house, to, to, to be together, something like that. And some, fam, uh, some members of the family would do, uh, would do uh, different ways to, to get that, get that dream be, be achieved or something. Uh, they would do some ways to keep the, that dream possible. And spiritually, it's like, it's like, uh, when, when you have a, when, I, when you have your family serving God and, and you were born in a family, you grew up in a family serving Jesus Christ, and you still have to do what what is what should be done for for not just for the family but for for God and it's not because your family is doing their stuff it's completely completely uh, uh, firm for everyone not to do it and we should continue what they've done and still finish the the dream that god has given them the vision that god has given them wow that's really great to know and uh i really am so grateful that it's you who's in the the talk right now like speaking about continuing the legacy of your parents and we didn't like plan for this you know like you yeah. being a pastor's kid and we're talking about this i was just listening Oh, look at that. The Lord is speaking something here. That's very good. Thank you very much, Dave. Let's continue that uh, stuff here. It says, The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. Appointing elders here could simply mean, for example, if they, um, your, your, your dad is like uh, letting you uh, be part of, of the ministry of the church. Appointing elders means appointing these leaders that you have, like uh, spreading, spreading, like, and uh, just uh, making them know that they like you're, you're really part of a team, directing them. Because here I could see, like, Paul is teaching Titus how to have wisdom in putting order the things, like, uh, that they have that Paul has, uh, Paul has uh, started. In Crete, so that's the reason why he left Titus there, and he he always uh, said to Titus that you have to appoint elders from uh, every town and stuff like that. So, for example, like in church, you could appoint for uh, people in the ministry for your business. You could appoint in every department of the business in your work. You could have somebody um, like uh, work as a team, you know, in in, in this. So maybe my my question for for you, uh, Deo, is how do you think is Having a team, uh, is it really is is having a team really important when it comes to organization or the ministry or the church or the business? Uh, having a team is like uh, making things better and uh, not just easier, but you're making you're making your your progress more uh, more. Uh, progressive and uh, when it comes to business uh, or friendship, friendship is a is a relationship with a, a composed of teams. It's not just uh, close people gathering together. And like in schools, uh, you do your project as a team. The importance of team is very crucial because. Uh, if you do it alone, then you can't you can't be able to think well. So unlike uh, in a team, there's somebody who does this part, uh, uh, helping people uh, uh, do their job, and this person watches people if they're doing what uh, what is right, and there's the the, the other person leading those leaders. So that the the whole purpose will be will be continued, and there will be 
something like uh like uh for a for a a house without without uh a house without good materials like uh there there's no good materials then that that house is very poor but if that house is composed of nails uh wood concrete stones iron or steel that house is very strong so it's like uh uh putting together what everyone has in building something like a giant robot it's like a you know like uh it's uh like for example we're we're one as a body uh of christ so some people ha have our teachers some people are prophets some some are apostles uh uh, evangelists so many different leaders so it, it doesn't mean you have to take over people but you gather as one and doing the work uh filling filling each and everyone's uh uh so you could say it holes like you know uh, the weaknesses Wow, and uh, I know, um, guys, if you're getting value out of this, and uh, please just hit the like button, share this, and uh, just uh, really um, tag your friends. I know this, this is kind of like a serious kind of matter, but if you're watching this right now, and maybe you have an organization, you have a business, you have like just start, you're just starting a ministry, um, this could really help you. We could learn from Paul here that we really need to have a team. And uh, even as we, we remember what Jesus did when he started his ministry, he had disciples, you know. I know it's not by accident why he, he did that. And there was this time when uh, also going back to the Old Testament when Abraham, uh, I believe it was Abraham who was really, oh no, Moses who was really busy with stuff. And he could say he's really tired of what he's doing. And then Jethro, his father-in-law, come came and he said why don't you just do the important stuff and leave those little uh, bits of pieces for sacrifices or doing the what the lord commanded for those leaders that you will appoint so i could see here um uh Deo, though, i think this is where we are going but as we continue here we don't just have to appoint leaders for the sake of appointing anybody else but here's the thing there are some really big of a big of uh, big requirements here an elder must be blameless it must be faithful to his wife a man whose children believe and are not open to charge of being wild and disobedient wow it's, if you would read verse 6 here this speaks about the family this speaks about family here and um this is not to throw stones on anybody or maybe you're saying I'm really not that qualified no but what I mean is that being a leader it really means like if you want to be successful in anything in anything that we do at our ministry business or in our work we have to also be a leader first and foremost in our family and this is really like the, the point here First, you have to be blameless, faithful to your wife, and your children are not. It simply means like what you live out there in the stage, in the ministry, and outside of it is the same thing when you are back home. So this is an encouragement to everybody right now. And uh, hopefully this is uh, this would encourage you. So Dale, with that in mind, do you have something to add to it? Uh, like uh, about the uh taking the leadership yeah 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 uh, uh uh it was like uh in the time of moses and he has to actually have to do the more important things which is the things that is more related to to his ministry and he should be letting other people do their jobs or not not job but their calling and uh, those things are important to them like uh in the church or in the business if i'm the the head of the business or the church uh i can appoint people to do uh like for example the uh to usher people some people 
may, might not might not like it because that's not their calling but to other people that's very important and to other people uh they can do they can serve in the uh worship team and for some people they don't know how to play music but they but for some people that is very important to them and that's their calling and the point is that when we gather together and you as a lead, leader and try to try to do what is more important to you it's not being selfish or something but it's like uh letting other people to follow their purpose and you yourself do your purpose uh and uh, leadership is not something like you have to do it and then you you should not show and you're like i should do it but i will not show my uh, a good example I, i will not become a good example it's like uh you know hypocrisy and it's not we're not throwing stones to people but this this is what re reality is and if we share something and we don't do it it's like talking to people that uh do what i say and don't do don't follow what i do uh and like for example in a in a gym setup uh because uh when you train martial arts and then you teach people like this do this and that and you can't even do what is right and then the coach come in uh, and finally when the coach comes in and then he teaches you what is right then you will face what is what is the true meaning of doing something like this and why and you can't just teach people you don't the things that you don't do and uh it 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 means uh, when it comes to uh keeping yourself uh pure of something and uh you're being obedient in the family uh you try your best uh, no we we all know nobody's perfect but in a fa in the family we we have to we have to show that we are also part of that uh team uh like we talked about earlier uh, uh, a team and everyone is a leader but there is one head and that's the the father and the mother and, but as a as a as a teammate we have to show that we're also pure and so that people will believe us like uh yeah uh, if we do this as part of the family we we arrange the things at at home uh your brother uh uh helping your parents and then and as we keep on keep on showing what is right and then we just don't tell people your your brothers like do this and that and I'm not doing this it is uh doing making yourself a good example so that they will also do their the uh do better things well so I, the the real uh uh thing that you were saying there is that when we appoint somebody we have to live by example and uh that's yeah. really um, awesome there on uh, deo and let's continue reading this one and the next thing here says since an overseer manages god's household he must be blameless so being blameless he explained here because like in verse six right yeah. he said it blameless he explained what really blameless is here he put a um, emphasis on it not overbearing not quick-tempered not given to drunkenness not violent and not pursuing this honest this honest gain um again um uh, i myself uh i'm sometimes guilty with this like uh, there were come, came a point in time in my life that I was really doing ministry, 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 and when it comes at home, I could even wash the dishes. I couldn't even like clean my room. I couldn't like even uh, do chores at home. And when I'm outside there, I'm telling people, you know, God is good, God is faithful, and yeah. this and that. But I really learned it the hard way. 
Because living like a double-sided life is really hard when doing the ministry, you know. And being blameless, this really, um, like, takes a lot of effort for us. Because, um, like Paul said here, being blameless is um, explained as not overbearing, not quick-tempered, all right? Sometimes I, I fail on this too. Not given to drunkenness. So I'm proud to say I'm not really uh, given to drunkenness. Not violent. Not pursuing this honest gain. So maybe, um, Deo, could you add something about this uh, topic here? Like being blameless, all right? Yeah. Do you have any insight on this? Or do you have any experience on this? Or do you have anything you want to share? Uh, I can't say that... Uh... This, uh, I, I know we're, I, I don't know if we all have been to this, but I, I've been to that. Uh, I've been there and it's really tough times and <laughs> keeping yourself blameless. And, you know, people, people just watch your, watch you fail and you have to keep yourself, you know, like pure. But in reality, we have to really focus on something, what, it, what God is talking to us it's not about uh be blameless because uh so that people don't look at you like this but if we focus on the word of paul he said uh be blameless and uh, we have to focus to that the the only word blameless not because and not to the people looking at us because if we do that for the people and then it's going to be hard uh, 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 I've tried it. I try to be, I try to do righteous stuff, uh, back in the early days, but it wasn't the pure thing. It's like doing it for, for, you know, like for people to, to look at you, uh, right and blameless, like, like those stuff. But for right now, the, the, True meaning. I, I, for me, I think for me, uh, the true meaning of blameless is, is doing what is, uh, doing your responsibilities. It's like if I, if I did something sinful, then what's going to happen? It, uh, I can't praise God. I can't show the true, true image of God. It's not just about personal thing, uh, personal things, but there's other generations. Of people that will follow you because not all people uh, blame you or uh, talk trash to you but there's so many people that follows you and look at you as their you know the inspiration it's uh, this very important that these things should be done uh, slowly and not don't be in a rush doing what is said in the Bible, we have to practice it, like what they said, uh, what, uh, what people, what, what leaders say, uh, you have to do it, not just talk about it. So like uh, violence, uh, uh, those things, uh, different things, uh, different uh, things that make us fail. There's so many things that make us fail. Sometimes we think it is good, but it's not actually. And it's hard to do it if we think, if we, I think if we do it for the people and if we do it for our spirit and for, for God, then I think it's going to be easy. I've been relying on God, practicing all these things like uh, being pure, uh, being blame, blameless. Uh, I know I'm not perfect. Uh, I, I fail most of the time i can't do it 100 percent perfect but uh, i still go back and put in my mind that i'm gonna be doing what is my purpose and i'm gonna practice it until i get my uh the desire of, of god you know the, the the desire of god i should also be my desire wow that's really great, and uh, I really uh, appreciate your honesty there, Dale, because we have a lot of stuff to really learn as we go on. And I could say here, being blameless is here in the next uh, verse that we're going to gonna have. So this is not it. Do not be overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing 
dishonest gain, dishonest gain rather. All right. This is where how to be blameless is defined. He must be first is hospitable. And the topic that we have is one who loves what is, what is good. Wow. Who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. And says he must hold firmly to the trustworthy message that has been taught so that he could encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. But we will be focusing on this. Rather, he must be a spitable one who loves what is good. It is like the first time I was reading this, so I was really asking, how could I live a blameless life? And it's really uh, very clear here that Paul is say saying, love what is good. Wow. This may sound very basic, very simple, and you could say very elementary, but most of us, even myself, sometimes fail this because like people would always say, you know, whatever is is bad. It's the greatest thing to do, you know? But here he said he says, love what is good. So with that in mind, um uh Dale, do you have anything you want to share with this? Because for yeah, me personally, it's really hard for, for this. It's a process to love what is good. But I know Paul, being an experienced apostle, experienced church uh, planter, living this with Titus and saying you have to appoint leaders that love what is good. It's more than just saying this to them. It's also encouraging Titus to keep on loving what is good. So what can you say about this? Uh, this word is uh, very unclear to the generation these days, uh, to, the, to the culture we have right now, uh, being uh, love what is good. And there's so many people think that you, you, should, you should do this because uh, they, they're making things, uh, 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 they're making bad things uh, good. Uh, uh, they're making it look good, but it's actually bad for everyone, uh, for everybody, and for us. And uh, especially on social media, uh, the bad things, uh, we're like, we're acting like they're good. Uh, the uh, people treat it as good things. And the Bible says, saying that uh, love what is good. And sometimes if we say it to people uh, then love what love this uh, love yeah, becoming a faith, uh, faithful person uh, be pure and be blameless that, that they hate it because they just uh, uh, we people just uh, try to escape those things that uh, we don't want to do it we, we, we run away from those because uh, we know it's hard but uh, but when we love good and uh, the true true goodness that God is showing us, there is freedom and and the, that goodness uh, fulfills the uh, the purpose of our lives and it, it, it's it gives us uh, eternal satisfaction. It's not about uh, feeling uh, good deep within us uh, physically or flesh. Uh, feeding your flesh, that that term. Uh, it's about uh, uh, goodness, the eternal thing. You know, if we think about eternal things, uh, what it uh, it means, eternal things are the things that God is doing in our lives, uh, the the purpose of God in our lives, and that is what is good. And if we think goodness. Uh, we do good things, love what is good, and then we should be thinking what uh, what does Paul mean? Uh, what does good mean means to Paul? So if we ask Paul, then he will tell us. But Paul's heart is what Jesus' heart is. So it means if we follow goodness, then we follow the goodness that Jesus is talking about. And 
that that goodness it give us will give us eternal satisfaction the love completeness wow yeah yeah and um i was like uh reminded by this verse while you were you were saying this i i could see here jesus said here luke 18 19 says why do you call me good wow this is really great jesus answered no one is good except God alone. Oh, no. So when we say here, wow, this is really connected here. Loving what is good is more than just doing, like what you're saying, more than just doing these things just to please the crowd, please the people. It yeah. actually meant that we would love God with our all. Yeah. Because he's the good God. He's the great example. He's the God who's there, who's more than willing to help us in any situation. Because there's nothing wrong with people helping us. But to be honest, people are always limited. But if we go to this God and we love this God who is good, I know things in our life would go, I, I could say it's really not uh, a smooth kind of stuff. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. But you could still know that you're going to be on the other side, Grab, you know, um, roller coaster ride on the other side, the, the, the time there. Anyway, so yeah. maybe to, to just uh, have this encouragement to anybody, leadership is never easy. Appointing leaders is never easy. Like discipling people are never, is oh, never really that, like we could say, I just want to disciple somebody and then that's it. It's, it's, uh, it, t it takes a lot of hard work and heart. But here, Paul is encouraging us. I know people of you here, you were really asking, maybe some of you have, you have disciples, you have people you do Bible study with, you have people who mentor. Somebody. But Paul is saying here, we have to teach, because this is the thing. If they couldn't live this life, uh, if, for example, if not, they're not blameless, then we have to help them in order for them to have this life that is not blameless by being number one an example number two by showing them to God that they will say I will love what is good and this thing that is good is nobody else but God who is also who is really good so I know it's it's kind of like mumbling or scrambling on your head but hopefully you could get the point here that the bottom line of the story with everything even with ministry with our calling with our purpose we have to love what is good. And yes, that boils down to loving God. So thank you very much, Deo, for this time. And now thank we will go to like, like the, uh, we're not yet done. We're going to go to the uh, exciting part of Kamustahan with Pedro. You know, we have uh, discussed more a lot of the Bible right now. We were really a, a little bit serious about it, a little deep about it, but it's just okay. Uh, that happens also. But this time, Deo, I will give this to you. You have to pour out your heart. You could testify of what Jesus did in your life. How did you come to know Him? Kung hindi mo talaga kaya magtagalog, pili kagid ka ilunggo, wala problema. Basta may galan, tawag mo niyang ilunggo, wala siya yan. You know, it's up to you. Whatever the Spirit led, uh, is lead, whatever the Spirit leads you to say, and uh, just testify, and yeah, just pour out your heart, and I will give this floor now to you. Okay, uh, should I start? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, for, for, the, for, for the past few months, uh, I've been struggling with, with my time, you know, with my time uh, for, uh, with my family, uh, with my relationship with God. Uh, with my family in church because of uh, this pandemic and it's it was very challenging but I I I started think about what is good and I just started loving what is good and though it's hard sometimes there are times that you just fail and you don't know what to do and you wake up in the morning and what should I do and you, you have no purpose 
and this came uh, and then uh one day uh uh god uh, i talked to god and uh lord what, what should i do now and then and then i have i get no answers and i just do my thing like the regular thing that you do during the pandemic it's like just to continue asking god uh i don't know what to do now lord and finally god answered me with so many so many things that i've been asking uh has been answered like so i know you have a yeah you're struggling but uh but uh you have to continue you have to endure these things that uh, uh, uh broken your your lifestyle your old lifestyle for this uh for 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 you to have more time uh with with god you know with with him and then i realized that i think i was thinking uh, that that i've been doing these things because i think it should be done something like that and i'm not doing it with with love uh with 100% love and I'm not doing it with you know if you're doing ministries you sometimes fail to do it like the right thing you know do it with love uh loving what is good uh what which is you know the eternal things you just do it sometimes you just do it because you have to do it and that is very wrong and and then i i started to think about lord uh, give me a give me one week to think about this and i prayed and i keep on praying that how 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 to live my life uh, to get uh get it right you know you know once you feel uncomfortable uh serving god at the same time you feel you don't you don't feel that fire deep within you but you still serve god it's not right uh there's something in you that you have to you have to fix and you have to deal with and that moment i realized that uh this is uh i think i think i have to reset myself i have to break uh god has to break my heart uh god has to break me and i have to redo everything i started like a like a child like you've been born again and as we started as i started to do it and then i soon realized that it's easier to, to learn when you're when you become and then you become pure and then you become it, it it's easier to learn and it feels lighter to do the the work of the lord uh, to do things at home to do to to earn money to 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 share to talk to socialize with people when when you clear up yourself and that's i'm i'm fully loaded at that time because i've i've been doing so many things that are not really not really important things and i soon realized that you should uh god is telling me that i should be do what is eternal you know uh, like uh if i ask you if i do this what is the 50th move i'm going to be doing like i i should think ahead and god gave me the wisdom to 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 just follow the 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 calling you know the what is god is uh, what god is talking to you in your heart you have to follow it and and i started practicing it uh and then right now uh i've been i've been doing good and still planning for more things you know we we all we we are all growing up and learn more things and as we continue and that we realize uh there's so many things that are better and these things uh, all the things in the past we've been doing is not as good as it is what, what we think it is but god is very graceful and 
and he's giving us the right time to switch to make uh, better decisions. And right now I'm continuing to serve uh, in the church, although it's very hard. Sometimes it, I just have a few moments in my in my family at church, like uh, in our discipleship. Uh, and it's very fun. It's like, uh, it's been a long time not seeing the, those people. And it's very uh, overwhelming sometimes. Uh, and I really miss those, miss those uh, my discipler, I miss my leaders. But in this case, I have to deal with it. Uh, I have to focus on God very and it's very fun because it's like Elijah being alone and talking to God, dealing with his problems. And it's very good. Yeah. So for other people that are struggling, uh, do, don't don't stop uh, doing what is right, doing what is good. And time will come. The there will be the puzzle will be you know, connected all together and you soon realize that all the things that you've been struggling has a purpose later on.